Okay, um, hello everyone. So today I will be quickly touching on prototype pollution and um, a quick way to demonstrate this will be to use the um, Kiba room uh, which showcases obviously Kiba and, and um, we'll be looking at um, prototype pollution uh, exploitation although I'll be relying on an exploit of proof of concept um, in this GitHub repo but I'll just um, gladly showcase how um, you can actually exploit this then quickly escalate privilege to grab all the required flags um, just to showcase that you've been able to solve the challenge all right so um, the survey started and we can see it's running on this IP I'm just going to show the results of the nmap scan initially we can see the ease of 2280 obviously 5601 is um, that's designated port for Kibana. So if you do not know what Kibana is, obviously you want to go check the ELK stack. Uh, um, um, we do know it's that um, robust or rich dashboard where you can have um, as much as information you want to have from probably anything you want to uh, hook that up with. So we can see the ES management listening right on that port. It means it is Kibana. And um, I wouldn't go through browsing to the page because obviously it's not necessary at this point um, so I'm going to go after this and um, I'll be showcasing an exploit now I'll quickly uh, this is a Python exploit although there is um, there are several exploits for this particular CV 2019 um, 20, 2019 um, this one seemed to be pretty much easy to just run uh, although there is another one that you can actually copy and paste by right, visiting the page uh, let me show what it looks like Maybe that would be a good way to also talk about that passively. So if I copy this and I'm able to browse to this on 5609, which is the port where we identify 5601, we will see that um, obviously you will find the Kibana dashboard over there, which this is what it looks like. So we can see that's the symbol for Kibana. Um, that's going to load up pretty fast then um, I would showcase how you could use the other exploits to still go after this. But for today, I'm going to open this up. Then let's talk a bit about this. Now, prototype pollution is something which is not new anymore, obviously. The, whilst there are quite a number of exploits in the wild showcasing how this works, um, um, these uh, Python exploits pretty caught my attention. And um, uh, maybe just a quick walkthrough on it, we can see defining the function get version. Now you need to verify the version because um, anything less, anything more than this specified version here obviously will not be vulnerable to this exploit. So we need to check if the current version we have running here will be vulnerable to that exploit. It takes a while to load. Okay, so that's the first part of the code. The text function, we can see definition there, get version, and we can see the try basically using the request to see if you can fetch out that then get the version then print out uh, fill the connect as an error so we can actually manage that error handling over there then um, verify the vulnerability so once the version is checked second function will be verifying the vulnerability so we can see um, he has actually clearly defined the versions that he wants to fall within that scope of um, vulnerable version. So 5.6.15, 6.0.0, 6.6.1. And then if not, definitely then it returns the force and tells us, okay, version is not vulnerable, version is vulnerable. And if it's vulnerable, then it's going to verify the vulnerability. Again, using the HTTP, um, using headers here, we can see user agent specified as Moxilla, then uh, the key version, then going after the path application JSON on the application or the, the directory. Then if that is valid, then we can see the data being passed in there. Now, it's going specific. Uh, I wish this thing could load up pretty fast. It takes a while. Okay, great. So if I go all the way to um, this APM, I know the exploit is taking advantage of the timeline, uh, but I just want to showcase a few stuff here. Um, yeah, this thing is pretty slow. Don't want this to go beyond 10 minutes. Okay, so we will see that it's been clearly defined what is happening here. We can see that .esp. I just wanted to showcase that in the Kibana dashboard so you understand that we're going after that where you have that time function over there. And if that works out fine, we can see the API timeline run. Uh, um, obviously, that's the path this thing is defined on. Then the exploits, the function for the exploits, we can see that specifying the local host, the, the ports, then the version. If all these are valid, then it's going to try to run 
Um, look at the payload, the way it defines the payload. Again, uh, the prototype pollution relies on the fact that there is something already there. So if we can make that change, then on the fly, we can actually use that to, um, maybe I could do some detailed explanation here. Okay, look at this. Now, AAA. Obviously, we know this is a Linux system, so uh, I'm trying to specify what comes first on the top of these attributes. Obviously, that would be the console.log. Then if that works out fine, then we can use a child process that has been spawned to take advantage of the fact that we can inject a pro prototype, kind of like polluting that prototype. Then we still specify that stuff environment, that's environment variable over there. Uh, um, then if that works out fine, obviously, then that it takes advantage of that, then being able to substitute that's or maybe substitution is not the right word to use but more or less like taking advantage of the fact that it can actually call the same thing then replacing that with our own exploit code then if that works out fine then we can call our exploit code to execute the vulnerability and give us a reverse shell so that's what this is basically on a high level um then i'm going to go out of this uh, go to the tab where i've got this set up so i've grabbed the exploits uh, uh, from the github repo i cloned it simply then um, I'm staging this specifically, going after the targets. Uh, this is the targets, that same port. Then I'm setting the listener, the listener, which is where I will stage my netcat listener to catch a reverse shell on this. So if I run this quickly, we will see that um, it's going to do the verification. Version is vulnerable. Then it's trying to exploit, then exploited the version. So we can see all right here we got that callback so id over here will be the kiba user i think um, i'm going to do my simple python um, 3 minus c um, then do the excuse me import pty um, pty dot spawn let me just spawn uh, bean bash shell bean bash shell so term is x term so we should be able to clear this now if i um see the into home um we will see the users or the user kiba if i see the into kiba okay um now in kiba we should have uh, maybe the user the text flag i can cut that out and that's what it is great so let's go after the um the other flag now to go after the other flag i will be relying on um, the fact that if I go, I'd actually solve this challenge, so it's pretty much not new for me. So um, you would see that um, from a bit of research, recursively list all the capabilities. We're just going to be taking advantage of this get cap. I'm going to copy this, then I'll go to my terminal. I'm going to paste this over here. Then I'll pipe this out to um, dev null so I can actually manage all the errors that may come from this. Took a while, but uh, we're able to run the get cap, and um, we can see these uh, particular binaries got capabilities. Specifically, I'm going after this first one. This is actually a Python program, and we can see we're running Python with um, sweet bit. So we can take advantage of this more like to steal that and use that as a way to spin a shell. Maybe that's what we're going to be doing to elevate our privilege. So what we're going to do is I'll copy these absolute parts of this binary. Um, and I'm going to run this binary on the fly. Uh, I'm just going to paste this here. It's Python, obviously, it gives me a Python prompt. So I can do the import, uh, let's import OS, then let's use OS to actually see if we can invent that privilege. I could do the OS, uh, um, maybe try to get first UID. Let's find out who we are. 1000, obviously, not root user. So how about we can do the um, Okay, OS set UID. Um, can we set UID to zero, which would be the root user, the first user? Then OS gets um, UID. Verify what we are now. Now we are roots. So on this prompt, we are roots. Now let's use this to spin a shell. OS dot uh, system. I think this should do the magic. I'm just going to put in here bin bash. Then wrap this up. Close this over. Great, ID, we are root on the box. So I'm just gonna, you can see that the user ID is root, the group ID is still Kibana, the group is still Kiba, uh, but again, our user ID is now root. So let's see if we can go into root 
and uh, maybe list the content, cut the content of root.txt, and that solves the challenge. All right, thank you for your patience. I hope you love the content. If you want more explanation as to how this exploit works, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be glad to actually help do that explanation. Thank you for your time and see you in the next recording. Yep, bye.